Yeah, um, it was tough for me the first, first half. But um, yeah, when I hit that three, it kind of gave me you know, confidence boost to keep on making plays. Did they get all those threes in the first half because they were doing well? Or did they get the second half? It's a hard question. Uh, they, I mean, most of the threes and tough plays were coming, you know, five seconds left in the shot clock. Um, credit to them for being able to make those kind of shots. Um, I, I think that, you know, obviously there were things where, you know, mental lapses that, you know, we could have corrected, but at the end of the day, you know, they hit some tough threes down the stretch. Hold on, we get in the game. On the boards, what did you guys do differently in the second half? It was pretty close in the first half, and then you really got out of the sense of urgency. Um, you know, nobody wants to be the first win to a team that hasn't, um, you know, won a game, uh, won a game all season. Um, so that kind of sense of urgency as well, you know, we've, we lost some games that you know we shouldn't have lost this year. So obviously we didn't want to have a um, losing record. So we, we did all all we could to um, get this get this win. And I think you know obviously coach made a good point to us. You know we keep our energy level up, and you know it just starts with one person getting a rebound and everybody else chimes in. What's the impact that the crowd had on you guys in the second half? They were big. Even I think the bench the bench was big too, as far as you know making one play and you know them getting loud and. She wanted to come down the defensive end and make another play. Yeah, she mentioned that sense of urgency. I'm curious, kind of the troubles you had as a team. How would you think it relates to that? As well as maybe not playing, you know, with the number two you had plus, you know, five eight minutes. Excuse me. Like, how something? much do you think the troubles you guys have had, you know, to this point have had to have dealt with sense of having not enough sense of urgency? the way you guys were playing in the last five, six, seven minutes? Um, obviously, you know, we, we, as a team, we, we know that, you know, past games, you know, gets a point in the second half where we kind of have let downs and, and we kind of let the team come back. But um, I guess, you know, we, we spent a lot of time in practice going full speed and trying to play the same way through our practice and bring the energy, the energy throughout the whole practice. And I feel like we had a good couple days and a half of practice. I think that helped us out in the second half today, kind of being able to push through the fatigue and make plays down the stretch. And, and, and today was the first time all year long where number 10, the Davis kid, was, was um, you know, kicking our butt the first half. And it was the first time all year long we had somebody, Josh came to me at halftime or as we were going on the court to, he says, Coach, I want number 10. And he guarded him the second half and was brilliant against him defensively. You know, he might not have, Josh didn't have one of his better games offensively. He probably had a huge three and made his free throws, but he was excellent. Probably his best game in his year and a half here at Georgia Tech defensively, especially guarding on the ball. And uh, it was the first time that we've had that all year where somebody comes in and demands, I like, coach, I want number 10. And that gave us a little juice there. We, we need that. Um, and so that was, that was important for us. So, I want to credit him on that because defensively, that, that, that it does not show up on the box score, but but that was huge on what he did today for our team and for him personally. He was 0 and 8 in the second half. You know, at halftime, coach said he had 10 points, and you know he he not only made plays for himself, but he got other his other teammates going, and they fed off of him. So you know, I wanted to take it personally because I know that you know we were really you know, itching for this win. So I I tried to do everything in my power to make sure he didn't get going. And, and just, you know, we, we win the game today because, and I said this at the very beginning of the year, our mar we get, for us to have success, we need to have marginal gains on two key areas. we got to be better at taking care of the ball and free throw shooting. And, you know, we had four turnovers the first half, and then nine points off of our turnovers, only two the second half, but no points off of our turnovers. So a total of six turnovers. Uh, we were 20 for 21, you know, obviously from the free throw line. I mean, those two things for us to, to you know, have a chance to keep moving forward and keep continuing to get better, those are two huge areas for us. We just got to value that ball. Like, there's nothing more important than taking care of that ball. And, and you know, it's just the, the, the mentality of that we just got to, you know, focus on us and don't turn the sucker over and, and, and value it and, and go from there. But um, it was great to see Ben those last six, seven minutes play like the old Ben Lammers. Uh, Evan Cole came in and gave us such a huge lift defensively and had a great putback. Um, we talked about Josh just, you know, on his defense, and he had a huge three as well, too. Uh, Brandon had to play point guard for us today because Jose was out. Uh, four assists, one turnover, and Todrick was extremely efficient. 
I brought him off the bench. I'm going to continue. You know, I think, you know, we're just better with him off the bench, and uh, he's better. I mean, he, he was efficient. Uh, 17 points, a career high nine rebounds. Uh, he had an efficient game, and and part of that is he gave us some firepower coming off the bench. So uh, we needed that as a team. We you know we just we're a little bit there as a wounded animal, and so we just needed to get through that hump. And I was really happy that late last you know six seven minutes maybe got us some of the old Georgia Tech back who we were, and some of these guys like Josh and the rest of the guys kind of got their mojo back and kind of how we how we need to be. So. I mean, look, they came in, Coppin State, and, and Juan Dixon's going to, he's going to get that program turned around. There's no question on that. But, I mean, they are second to last in the country in three point shooting. And Cedric Council was five for, he was shooting 18% coming in. And they shoot 46% from three, and he shoots, hits five for six three. And I was just like, you got to be kidding me. Is it this year? Could this, I mean, the second to last team in three point shooting. And they're just firing like they're not Coppin State, but Golden State. And, um, you know, it was just unbelievable. But I think that Juan's going to do a great – he does a great job with them, and they're going to get their, they're gonna get that program going. But we needed to win, and we just – we got a great opportunity on Saturday versus Notre Dame. Going back to the foul shooting and down the line in the ACC, how important is it to have the guys that normally go to the foul line are, are good foul shooters? Well, I mean, it's important, but whenever we get fouled, we just got to go up there and, and, and make free throws. Um, eight, you know, look, we're banged up. Uh, Sylvester's out. Uh, AD sprained his ankle, so he's out. I don't know how long. Um, uh, Curtis is still out. Jose, uh, they, they wouldn't let me put him back in because of protocol. Um, let's see, who else is out? Uh, yeah, we just, we're just banged up, you know. Yeah, Justin is not here. He had a funeral. A family member had passed, so he I've excused him for this week. So uh, or somebody close with his family um, had passed, and so he's excused for this week. He will not be at Notre Dame either. Um, and then um, <clears throat> and so we're just you know we're down to seven scholarship guys, and then when Jose went down, we were down to six six eligible scholarship guys to play. But uh, we found a way to get a win. And uh, we just hopefully can have some momentum going on in the last six, seven minutes. When you say it's in protocol, is that I, I don't know. That was just Rich told me I could put him back in. Just, you know, protocol, whatever that meant. Do you have any sense of if he'll be available? I'm assuming he'll be available. I mean, I, uh, you know, he, I, I thought really it was one of those ear things, you know, where you, I don't know what it's called, where you get banged in the ear or something, but. I don't know. So Richard, Richard Stewart told me I wasn't allowed to put him back in. So obviously I got to follow his. Since the last time we talked to you, have you heard anything further on Kurt? No, just he's not going. He won't play Saturday. You know, we're just. It's unfortunate. I mean, we need we need him. You know, we're we're just banged up. Bottom line, we're banged up. So, but guys, got to get it done. We got to find a way. No excuse. Um, you know, that's, that's what I'm saying. The way for us to get it done is we just can't turn the ball over and make free throws. That gives us our best chance. When they, were you, you seemed like you were very well prepared for when they decided to go maybe do a little pressing against you. You moved the ball well and got some nice easy shots. Yeah, no, we, we were good. We've, you know, Rob, we just got to value that ball. We can't be throwing the sucker away, like I said. And, and today, you know, maybe in one other game where we just thought we really took care of it. We just, it's what we've done the last days of practice is just value the basketball. Our assist numbers are down, which I don't like, but um, we just got to value the ball and, and um, not turn it over. That's our best chance to give us our best opportunities as we move forward in ACC play. What do you think happened in the last six, seven, eight minutes that you did? What kind of click? Like yeah, you know, Ken, I don't know. It's been one, I mean, it's just been, I could write a book on this year, you know, in the first 80 days. Um, and so, and the, and the breaks haven't gone our way. And that's just, you know, sports is a funny deal. Sports is funny. You never know in sports. It's, and all of a sudden, maybe there's something clicks in those last six, seven minutes. And then that gives us a spark to get us moving forward or something. So, um, <clears throat> You know, we just we, we found a way to 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 get it done, and uh, you know we probably we got a break that that you know when I say a break, you know we made our free throws. We we, we were getting fouled, and we made our free throws, and we didn't turn the ball over. I mean, that is our entire deal that we're going to have to live by as we uh, play these teams in the ACC. 
I'm wondering, is it possible that not having Jose in there kind of forced them to each other a little more and the ball. Could, could have been, you know, and also I would tell you Ben was a stud last six, seven minutes. I've been saying it for a long time. Everything we do is through Ben, offensively and defensively. Like he had six blocks tonight, so he he wasn't real good at, at some stretches earlier in the last six minutes. In the last six minutes, he got it going. I mean, you know, if Ben's playing as a very high level player, we're going to win a lot of games. If he's not, it's just going to be hard for us. Um, and, you know, he's obviously been banged up, and he's still banged up, so he's not fully healthy. So a lot just comes down to what, what ben, how Ben Lambert's plays. Did you know you were perfect from the line before training staff? Yeah, I, well, I mean, uh, and again, the way our years, the ball's bounced. One of our best, I think he's shooting over 90-some-odd percent, and he misses a front end of a one-on-one. -on -one. God bless America, you know. <laughs>